deriving first principles. Let's have a look at a generic function. Let's call it f of x. Now, as we move along the x-axis, what's happening to the function? Well, it's constantly changing. And how can we define the way that this function is changing as we move across? Well, here it's looking kind of steep, and here it seems to be flattening out, and it goes down and then flattens out and then goes up. So as we move across, a good way to define how it's changing is to actually look at the gradient of a tangent at a point. So if we're looking at this point here and we draw a tangent, the gradient of this tangent would tell us something about how this function is changing as we move across. But finding a tangent with this one point might be a little difficult. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at two points and draw a secant through those two points. And we're going to find the gradient of the secant because it's a lot easier to find a gradient knowing two points on the function. Let's call this point x, which would mean that it's x units away from the origin. Let's call this distance h, which would mean this point here is x plus h, because that would just be this distance x plus this distance h to give us x plus h. What about the corresponding y values? Well, we can just sub x into our function and get our y value. And if you sub x into f of x, you just get f of x. And if you sub x plus h into our function, we could write the y value for this point as the f of x plus h. Now to get the gradient of a line given two points, we can use the formula m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we're going to use this is y2, this is y1, and this is x2 and x is x1. So let's go ahead and sub those in. So our gradient of this secant, so I might write ms, is going to be y2, which is the f of x plus h, minus y1, which is f of x, over x2, which is x plus h, minus x1, which is x. So our gradient of the secant ends up becoming f of x plus h minus the f of x over x minus x is gone, so we get over h. But we didn't really want the gradient of the secant. We actually want a gradient of a tangent, because this will define it over one point. So how are we going to turn this secant into a tangent? Well, if we think about what's happening here, these two points are separated by a distance of h. So if we make h a little bit smaller, let's say we had, instead of the point all the way out here, we had the point here, we'd have this secant. And if we made the point even closer, we'd have this secant. And eventually, we were trying to make h equals 0. But we can't have h equals 0 because we're dividing by h. So we'd be dividing by 0, which we can't do. 
But if h was zero, and the two points would be on top of each other, we would have a tangent. So what we can say is that the gradient of the tangent is actually going to equal the limit as h approaches zero of the gradient of the secant. So as h approaches zero, as it becomes zero, our two points end up on top of each other and we end up with a gradient of a tangent. And this gradient of the tangent is what we define as our first principles. Thank you.